Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Top 10 Tuesday video. Yeah, this is episode 92. And for today, I'm going to focus on doing another Top 10 Director video or list. And uh, this is going to be Rogero Diodato's Top 10. Um, oddly enough, Rogero Diodato, for the type of films that he's directed in his career, surprisingly enough, he hasn't even done 10 horror films. He dipped into a lot of different subgenres. Uh, he did stuff from like, you know, sex crime films to action to drama, uh, sword and sorcery, um, you know, cop films. Uh, he did a lot of different subgenres, but mostly he did horror films. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to check out his new one. I believe it's in post-production right now. And it's the first film he's done in like a long, long time. I can't even probably since like 93 or something like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. But uh, it's called Ballad and Blood. I'm really excited to check that out. I heard it's getting close to being done and whatnot, so that's kind of cool. But yeah, so here's the Italian master Ruggiero Diodato's top 10. Without further ado, let's get right into this. In at number 10 is a non-horror film called uh, Live Like a Cop, Die Like a Man. Um, if I had to sum this film up, uh, this is probably one of the most nihilistic, <laughs> kind of scummy films you could ever see. Um, it's basically about these two cops right here that are part of this like elite force and they kind of have like a free range to like kill and stuff it's really strange um but uh, what they do is they essentially kill and then ask questions later they act like gangsters essentially they're just like these really vicious asshole cops um but uh, of course this drug lord or this crime lord wants them out of the way and yeah so that's your film right there uh it's pretty good man there's some really interesting um chase scenes in this film and just a lot of like kind of things that are going on where you usually don't see in these buddy cop films and things like that. It, it's very, very different. It's uh, written by Fernando De Leo, who has probably done some of the best Italian crime films of all time, in my opinion. Uh, that's what he's known for, and he did them the best. But yeah, so he wrote this for Ruggiero Diodato. And um, even though the screenplay is not one of De Leo's best, it's still really entertaining. And it's definitely one that you won't remember, or that you won't forget because of all the memorable crazy shit that these cops are doing you just don't see this in in cop films at all so um but yeah it's a pretty interesting film uh, if you like these type of italian crime films get definitely give live like a cop die like a man a shot it's pretty cool that was number 10 in at number nine is a film called waves of lust now this film right here is kind of a remake of polanski's it says right on the back here of Roman Polanski's uh, Knife in the Water, which I've never seen. I know about the film. I've never seen it before, so I really got to check that out sometime. Um, I did do a full-length review of this on my Ruggiero Diodato uh, theme week that I did sometime last year, a year before. I can't remember. But essentially what this one is, uh, this couple... Uh, their just vacation. They come in contact with this, or they meet this other couple, and this dude's like a rich guy with a with a yacht. So they board the yacht, and you know one thing leads to another, and all of a sudden there's like this love triangle happening, and you know the guy that owns this yacht is kind of a douchebag. He beats his wife and stuff like that, and shit kind of goes down from there. Um, it's a good film. I, I really like the screenplay in this. There's a lot of things that are going on. Uh, it's pretty. You know, it's it's just entertaining. It's all set on a boat, which I love. <laughs> I love films that are set on boats. And, you know, it's got a sleaziness to it and um, interesting characters and interesting things that are happening in this one. It's it's a pretty entertaining, thrilling type film. Um, yeah, Waves of Lust. Really good stuff, actually. Really got to check out Polanski's. I imagine Polanski's is probably better than this, but this is still a good film from 1975. One of his kind of, kind of you know, first breakout films I, I would assume so yeah waves of lust regaro diodato good stuff that was number nine in at number eight is a slasher film from 1988 and it's called phantom of death um essentially what this one is is this guy plays like a world-class pianist and uh he is starting to basically die. He contracts this really strange disease that ages him like crazy. So straps on a mask and then starts killing people that have found out about his untimely fate. Um, so yeah, Phantom of Death. Pretty cool film, actually. There's a lot of good pieces, uh, a lot of good music in this one. And decent kills, decent kills. Uh, like I said, I do have a full-length review for this one on my channel somewhere, if you guys want to check that out. But, um, yeah, it, you know, it's pretty standard. There's not, like, a lot of, you know, kind of new things that are happening. I mean, this is 1988 slasher stuff, you know. I mean, most of it had been done by then, but pretty entertaining stuff. Um, uh, what's this guy? Yeah, Donald Pleasance is actually in this film, too. Michael York, right there. Um, yeah, good cast, but 
give it a shot. Phantom of Death, good stuff. And that was number eight. In at number seven is another slasher film from, I believe, the year before, 1987. Now, this is a bootleg uh, body count. This film does not have a release here in Region 1. Uh, I do believe it has a Region 2 release. I'm not 100% sure if it's uncut or not. Uh, I think I have heard it is cut, but I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, yeah, essentially, this one is just a, uh, you know, kind of a backwoods slasher film. But it does have David Hess in it, which is really interesting. It's got Misty, uh, Misty Farmers in it also. Um, yeah, everything that David Hess is in, man, he's just always such a, such a presence. The one cool thing about this one, the mask is okay. The kills aren't the greatest in this, this film. I think they probably could have been a little bit better. Um, but you know, it's still pretty entertaining. If you like these backwards slasher films, pretty cool stuff. Awesome music in this. I've used the soundtrack and so, or the, the theme for body count in so many of my videos. Um, but yeah, really good stuff here. I believe it is done by Claudio Simonetti. Yeah, right there. So, you know what you're going to get with the music. But it is pretty standard. It's still a fun film. A body count needs a release. Hardcore on Blu-ray. I think it'd be awesome. So that was number seven. In at number six is, uh, is another one from 1988. And it's called Dial Help. And essentially what this one is, Charlotte Lewis plays a... Uh, she's like a medium. And she comes in contact with this dead phone operator. And uh, then one thing leads to another and people start dying in the way of the phone. So essentially this is like a killer phone film. Um, pretty cool stuff, man. There's a lot of really interesting scenes in this. There's one really cool scene in the subway that's awesome. Um, but Charlotte Lewis is just sexy as shit, man. She's so gorgeous. Uh, oh, I think there's some nipple right there. Yeah, this is a German, I think this is a German release. Uh, it, it is English. It is in English, so... Which is really cool. But, you know, this is a pretty fun supernatural killer phone film. I guess there's not a whole lot of these. But if for no other reason to check it out other than Charlotte Lewis. If, if, I mean, if that's what you want to do. But, uh, you know, it's a pretty good film. It's it's not bad. You know, pretty standard stuff from 88. But interesting. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I think this is out of print, this, this release. I don't know if this movie has any other releases. It probably does somewhere. But uh, it needs a region one. Blu-ray release, that'd be cool. That would be cool. So that was number six, Dial Help. In at number five is a film called The Washing Machine. Um, yeah, this is this is a pretty fun film, man. Basically about this guy that uh, apparently ends up dead in this, in this washing machine. And these three sisters all have different stories based on, uh, or all have different ideas and views of what happened to this. So the story kind of develops from all three of their uh, their um, the ideas of what happened and stuff. It, it's a really, it's an interesting film. I think it's very strange at times. Uh, and maybe, maybe some of it has a little bit of plot holes too, but you know, ultimately it's still a fun film. I, I like the way this film develops because there's nothing cooler than, you know, okay, which story is true, which story isn't, are all of them true or all of them not kind of thing. It, it keeps you thinking throughout the film. It's pretty interesting, but, um, yeah, fun stuff, fun stuff. This movie is from, I believe, 88 also, or I mean not from 88, uh, from 93, that's right, and it feels like it's an 80s film, that's what I was trying to say, it totally looks like it's an 80s film, it's crazy, it just looks super old school, but um, pretty sleazy, pretty sleazy stuff, there's a lot of, uh, you know, sleazy moments in this, which is awesome, because all the three of the sisters are pretty hot, and they're doing their thing, but yeah, pretty cool stuff, Watch machine, and in number five, and in number four is Ruggiero Diodato's Cut and Run, yeah, starring Richard Lynch there, uh, this is a essentially it's kind of like Cannibal Holocaust in a sense about this this uh, investigative team that is investigating these murders and then there's their investigation leads them into the jungle and there's like this cartel that lives there and um, or that is all set up there and they have like these cannibal uh, natives and stuff and yeah so the setup is very kind of similar uh, but it's awesome it's fun it's it's more of like an action film in a sense um, made with like horror elements and things like that but it's it's fucking awesome man i love it great great music um in fact i've used cut and run in lots of my videos also uh claudia simonetti's um music is just fantastic but uh cut and run great stuff man definitely give this one a shot it's got some pretty awesome moments it's got some sleazy moments of course in it also but you know if you like your jungle type action horror films give cut and run a shot it's pretty awesome so that was number four in at number three speaking of cannibal films we have to go with jungle holocaust here uh, this was Ruggiero Diodato's first uh, cannibal film. This is the one that he did before Cannibal Holocaust. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Basically, this one is uh, a team of people that crash in, uh, I believe it's Papua New Guinea where they crash. One thing leads to another. Uh, they get 
kidnapped by this cannibal tribe. Now they got to get away. Things like that. It's really good, man. I, I really enjoy this film. I'm, I've never had any issues with it. Um, music's awesome. Ivan Rashman's great in this uh, in this film. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. There's some really nasty, nasty gore in this too. Really good shit that happens. Um, <laughs> I don't want to give away the scene, but it's just awesome, man. I really like those. I always, I always dug Jungle Holocaust, man. This one's known as uh, shit, dude. This movie has like a hundred different names, I believe. Well, you know, kind of like all <laughs> cannibal films, but Jungle Holocaust, good stuff. Really, really good stuff. I was number three. In at number two, of course, is House on the Edge of the Park. Um, Starring David Hess, of course, also. And David Hess basically plays the exact same character as Last House on the Left. He's just the this most scummy douchebag character ever. Um, essentially, he gets invited over to this party uh, after helping these people out. And uh, he kind of takes advantage of the situation with his friend. And they start doing nasty shit to these people inside the house. It's kind of like a home invasion film, in a sense, if you've never seen it. Um, but it's fucking, it's good, man. I like, I like the story in this. It's you know, almost a little bit subtle how it comes full circle in this. Uh, I've heard some people say they don't really care for the ending too much, but it does make sense. It perfectly makes sense in my opinion. Um, but House on the Edge of Park, when I first watched this movie years ago, I never actually cared cared for it too much. It just it, it just had so many similarities to Last House on the Left that I was like, oh, fuck, it just feels like a remake to me, but it's not really a remake. Um, but, you know, I grew an appreciation for it, obviously, throughout the last long time. But it's great, man. David Hess is just so fucking good in this film, man. Um, yeah, he's he's great, man. So if you've never seen Last House on the, Le or, uh, <laughs> Last House on the Left, of course, right? <laughs> House on the Edge of the Park. Give it a shot. It's fucking fantastic. And, of course, in at number one, a little bit anticlimactic, of course, but you got to go with Cannibal Holocaust. Um, this movie still blows my mind every time I watch it. The music is just so fantastic in this film. The gore is amazing. Um, and, you know, to be considered, you know, a lot of people consider this to be the very first found footage film in a sense, just the way it's done. Uh, but Cannibal Holocaust is just, there's really not a whole lot to say about it that hasn't been said before. It's fantastic. It's amazing. Um, I believe you can watch this movie. No, maybe you can't on this one. I was thinking with the uh, the animal killings cut out of it. I've seen this movie so many times, it doesn't really bother me anymore. Um, but it is what it is, man. If, if you can't handle that type of stuff, it's pretty crazy. But this movie has one of the most insane histories behind it of all time. I mean, how Ruggiero Diodato was brought up on charges and had to prove himself that the killings of these people weren't real. <laughs> he had to, like, find the actors and they had to prove that they weren't dead and shit. It's, that's, that's pretty gnarly. Like, that type of... You can't buy that type of publicity, man. It's crazy. Um... Cannibal Holocaust, really, really good stuff. Amazing, amazing stuff. So, And that is going to do it for my top 10. Now, I did get this film in the other day, and it's Ricardo Diodato's The Barbarians. It's like a sword and sorcery type film. Um, I started watching, I haven't finished yet, so I, I couldn't fully you know, rate the film or put it into a top 10, but it was really, really entertaining. It's good stuff, man. Uh, Richard Lynch is also in this one, and he has the most fucked up hair, man. It's just awesome. He's just so, he plays this like evil kind of emperor leader whatever <laughs> it's, it's fucking awesome but yeah i gotta finish watching the barbarian so i'm really stoked to check that out but here's a little rundown of the films in at number 10 live like a cop die like a man number nine waves of lust number eight phantom of death number seven body count number six dial help number five the washing machine number four cut and run number three jungle holocaust number two house on the edge of the park and of course number one cannibal holocaust and maybe someday the Barbarians will make the list too. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, guys, uh, that is going to conclude the top 10 Rogero Diodato films. Let me know what uh, your favorite films are from Rogero Diodato. Um, I got to get my hands on that that one action film that he did. I can't remember what it's called right now, but it looks interesting. I've seen the trailer for it. It looks awesome. But uh, anyways, guys, I'm blabbling on. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.